Okay, hi everybody. And this is very much the session looking at the user stories um, where you're getting, you're getting to the uh, meaty side of things where you're actually now trying to flesh out your requirements based on uh, what the user actually wants. Once again, what I'll do quickly is just make sure that you can see me and uh, that seems to be possible. And um, I can now come over here and uh, show you what's on the board and then obviously we can take off from there. Uh, I'm just waiting for these to pick up very quickly and then you should be able to see. Okay, good. All right, so that's that's perfect. All right, excellent. So let's um, let's kick off. Uh, I'll just let everyone know that the session is live again um, so that we can um, kick off and then hopefully we'll have a great session. Okay, so just shoot that up there, shoot that out there, shoot that out there. Everybody knows that we are live, so nobody's missing out anything. Uh, the good thing about this as well is um, obviously once it's recorded, I will, you'll be able to go back and listen to it. That's one of the good things about uh, the live sessions on um, Facebook or YouTube. You know, it's not as if you listen to it and then uh, you can't listen to it again. You can always go back and listen to it, so I'll upload it. So don't worry too much about the fact that um, you may want to listen to it again and you can't. So that's sorted. Everybody now knows we're live and I can now continue. Okay, so from the last session we had, if you notice, we talked about one very important thing and that is understanding exactly what the customer wants and having a product owner to kind of describe those, what the customer wants in terms of user stories. Now, user stories are not the how you're going to do it. User stories is about the who, the uh, what, and the why, okay? But not the how, it's very important to understand and I kind of want that here. So when you look at a user story, okay? You're very much looking at who is doing what, what are they doing, and why are they doing it? The how is very much what the developers would the BA would flesh out in terms of functionalities. So you don't want to worry about that functionality. It's very, very high level. It's very much speaking the customer's language. You are um, literally becoming the customer, which is obviously the product owner, understanding what the customer wants and then knowing what who is that customer, what do they want, and um, and why do they want it. So who is the customer? What do they want and why do they want it? And it's all about establishing customer value and making sure that you're giving the customer exactly what they want. The developers, uh, the, the developers, designers, and the BAs can flesh out exactly how that functionality will work, but very, very much right now, all we're focusing on is who, what, why, okay? Which is very important. So you need to understand that. Now, um, <laughs> I don't know, companies are different, you know, you can join a company, you expect them to have a product owner, they don't have a product owner, they're working in an agile environment, and you as a project manager is actually filling in as a BA as well, and all of a sudden you have to do all these things. Same thing happens for a BA. So I always like my candidates to be prepared, to be all-rounded. Why? Because you just don't know what job you'd apply for. A job might be willing to pay 500 pounds a day, and um, the reason we're willing to pay that amount of money is because they're trying to cut costs. They don't want a product owner, they don't want a BA, they just want um, somebody who can do everything, you know? And uh, that tends to be a bonus for my candidates uh, because they can do all those things. Um, and then you would find, and that's normally smaller companies, you know, smaller companies would do that. Uh, but then you would find larger companies that don't mind having a split budget, you know, don't mind actually spending money to have the right team on board. Uh, you always, always tell people, see the business as a separate entity. See the business as a different world entirely, where you are entering that world to service that business. Now, that business will always look for the cheaper, most effective way for them to do things, and you have to be that solutions provider who can prov provide that solution. So it's always good to be that around that guy. So let's teach you. Uh, exactly how to create user stories and more importantly which is very important um, um, how to actually flesh those user stories out into the how okay so that's what we're gonna do now so the user story and then the how which is important now um, it's always good to start with epics uh, 
uh, epics are a collection of user stories. I, I always tell people, imagine watching a movie and that movie was amazing and then you had to tell a story about that movie. You won't start with just one user story. You will start with a number of user stories. And then when someone asks you about that movie, you say, man, it was epic. It was an amazing movie. Well, why was it epic? Because there were a collection of stories that made that movie amazing. So epics are collections of user stories, okay? So let us look at the eWork experience platform and what we want to do with it. And we look at it from the business value point of view, from the business perspective point of view, from the organization's point of view. So from the organization's point of view, we want the candidates to be sure of, um, we want the candidates, uh, we want prospects to know exactly what they, to, sorry, we want candidates to be fully informed before they join our platform, before they register. So being informed and knowing how the platform works is absolutely critical to us. We don't want people coming here and they don't know where they want to, what they want to do because what, that, what happens is they could spend a year, two years on our platform and they haven't got a job and they don't add to our success stories. They cause bad news for us, you know? So we want people to know exactly what they want before they come here. Well, how are they going to do that? Well, first of all, uh, one of the things that we identified from the, um, um, the customer journey mapping and uh, personal definition we did was realizing that people would love to watch a video of exactly what these roles are um, and how it applies within the digital space and then they would like to take a personalized test to discover which role suits them best. So we, when you think about it, I think this, this is very much the uh, exploration part, you know. So we could call this epic, um, the, we could call this epic discovery, okay. So let's call it discovery. We'll call this epic discovery. Because it, am I, am I calling it an epic? Because within discovery is a collection of user stories. Now, at this point, you don't need, I keep telling you, you don't need to go and be some, some technical genius, you know, who comes up with the uh, solution of how the system works from a technical point of view. At this point, you really need to understand the user and just write in simple English what the user wants. As a who, I want what? So that I can why? Very simple. As a who, I want what so that I can why? Who's the who here? The who is equal to the prospect. The what will be broken down into what the customer wants to do. The why will be obviously why they want to do it. So the what is what you call the activity. And why is what you call the results, for example. I hope it makes sense, all right? So, if you look at this from this angle, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Now, um, as a, so I'm thirsty. I'm really, I need a drink right now. As a trainer, I want water so that I can quench my test. It's just that simple. Can you see that? Can you see how easy that is? Not rocket science in any way, right? Now let's look at it from the perspective of the eWork Experience platform that we're trying to build. We know from the personal definition, the customer journey mapping, and the pain point. And just to recap on those of you that haven't watched the previous video, personal definition are fictional characters that represent your customers. And that includes the demographics, includes their motivation, the channels they use, and very much their pain points along the customer journey. The customer journey is very much looking at the touch point at which the business touch the, the customer touches base with your business from throughout the entire buying life cycle, even do towards the uh, process of them using your system and then becoming an advocate for your business. So the pain points along those areas, we identify it, come up with possible solutions. Obviously, solutions architect comes up and helps the product owner to identify that, then we create obviously user stories around that. Okay, so let us um, just take that off and let us come up with a few user stories under the discovery stage, which is important, isn't it? All right, so let's look at the first discovery stage. Uh, let's look at the discovery, epic discovery. As a prospect, now, before I actually do this, let's talk about what that prospect, what, 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 would, what would we identify as what the prospect wants to do? Well, we learned that the prospect wants to know what um, I want to understand how the I want to understand exactly what the roles are. Okay, so as a prospect, I want to watch a 
video, okay? I want to watch a video, so that is your what? So that I can understand what the roles are, okay? So that is the first user story. So we will now take that user story and then we would all, let's, let's, let's start to take it from the point of um, um, taking it through the life cycle of actually building the system. So as a prospect, I want to watch a video so that I can understand what the, the roles are. Now, are there any conditions here? Uh, if I do this, do I need to meet certain conditions before I can do that? Not really. I just want to go to the site uh, and discover what these roles are and click on a video called play. <laughs> I'll click on the video with a button that says play on it. So when I click on play, I should be able to watch that video. So there are no conditions here. So we don't need the Gherkin syntax, which is if uh, given that the user does this, when activity then results. We don't need that right now. Okay. So at that point, what feature, what is the feature that we need to create? Well, the feature we need is very much the uh, play, um, the video function or the playback function. Okay, so that is the function that we are going to need in order or in order for this active uh, function uh, in this user story to be implemented. Okay, so that's very very important. Now the project manager might then work with a team of uh, creative people to go and create the content for that video. But the developer's job is to make sure that when that video is uploaded, it can easily be played by the user. Very simple, right? Not rocket science. Now, that said, let us now move on to the next stage, the next user story. Uh, keep this in mind, all right? I'm gonna move on to the next user story. All right, okay. Now, for the next user story, this is where this becomes very important. Um, I've watched the video. I now know exactly what the roles are. I wanna take a personality test. I wanna discover what role suits me best. As a prospect who I want to take, that's the what? My personality test. Why? So I can discover what role suits me best. Okay, so that is the story. Is that an agreement with the client on what they want? Yes. Is that important to them? Yes. Okay, good. So what happens next? Well, you have that over to the BA who then goes out and fleshes this requirement out in terms of understanding the features that we're going to need. So what are the features that we need to take a personality test? So looking at the existing personality test we have, for example, we have a series of questions um, and a series of answers. Uh, a series of questions uh, based on your yes or no, it analyzes your uh, results and then tells you whether you are a BA or PM. So we need to build the logic for that. So that functionality, so the P test, personality test functionality is what now needs to be built. Now that how that will be built is where we will sit down with a subject matter expert that understands how the personality should be built, uh, build the logic, uh, sorry, um, describe the logic for that, and then we might need a process flow diagram, for example. So that process flow diagram, if I can just jump um, off but this, so you realize that as a result of this user story, we actually need a data flow diagram or process flow, uh, the data flow diagram, not a process flow diagram. So you need a data flow diagram. For example, if I take my test and my result equates to this, then I am a this. If I take my test and my result equates to this, then I'm a this. That is where the get in sync that's come into place, really, because you really, um, let me just make sure you can see. Um, so let me just take that off. Uh, because at this point, you now need the given that my test result, uh, sorry, given, given that I take my test, sorry, given that, given, given, given that I take my test when my results equals whatever the results are, then display this rows to fit this person's personality, okay? So that is now me richly documenting the logic of how the personality will be built. But it's not what you do at the early stage of creating a user story. A user story is simply 
how the user, sorry, what the, who the user is, what the user wants and why they want it. Simply stop it there. Don't go beyond that. Don't, don't overcomplicate the issue. When you now start working close to fleshing out the requirements, that is where the Gherkin syntax comes into place, where you can now look at the conditions involved as a result of the user's inputs. This is the system output or the user's multiple inputs. These are the multiple outputs or the one output that would happen. Now, from there, you can now create a flow, data flow diagram, a diagram that actually further confirms what it is that you actually have here. And that defines very much the discovery stage. I mean, once I've taken my test, once I've listened to the video, I know what suits me best. I take my test. Um, I know, so I, I listen to the video, I understand the roles, I take my test, I know what role suits me best. Then I guess the next thing I want to do at that point in time is register. So that is no longer within the discovery uh, epic. That is now in the registration epic side of things. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm doing is now categorizing all of my user stories based on business value to know which are the most important things I need to do first. The customer needs to discover who they are. After they discover who they are, they need to register. After they register, they need to attend a free training session. So you will now start to define your epics based on what exactly the customer needs to do. And then within those epics, you will now break it down into user stories. But the user stories are very much not broken down into the how, but very much the who, what, why. The how will be done later on. I hope that makes sense. So just imagine it from this perspective of the product owner, understanding what the customer wants, fleshing them out into user stories. Those user stories will now become a long backlog, a long product backlog of what the customer wants. They will prioritize the most important things we need to do. I hope that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, let me know and I will obviously recap again. So if you want me to recap, just type in the comments, can you say that again? And I'll gladly say it again. If you want me to, um, if you want me to explain something, just do that. And please also, I forgot to say this before, if you're learning here, like and share. Share the love, you know, you're not paying for this, it's free of charge, so just share the love using the features that you have over there and then you can actually share it and it will make life easier for you, okay? Or make life easier for somebody else who needs to learn about user stories, all right? Creating user stories either as a PM or as a BA. Okay, so now that we have that sorted, what else are we going to do? Well, imagine that we have created all the epics. So normally you would have maybe epic one and then you have user story, user story, user story. You have maybe epic two, you have user story, user story, user story, have epic three, user story, user story, user story, you have epic four, user story, user story, user story. All right, now I'm kind of assuming that I've prioritized this. I'm just assuming that, but let's just say that we haven't assumed, we haven't prioritized it, we just listed all the user stories, booking them, that categorize them into epics, but then we now have to ask ourselves, this is what you now call your product backlog. This is a backlog of, so this here is your product backlog, okay? This is a backlog of all the set of um, user stories that needs to be implemented in order for the user, in order for you to deliver a working software that the customer actually wants to use. So bearing all of this in mind, um, somebody said it makes sense, good. So bearing all of this in mind, uh, what we now need to do is prioritize it, which is the most important feature that we need to launch in order for the customers to start experiencing the system and other start in order for, for us to um, start adding value to the customer. Because remember, um, this is these are your stakeholders over here, okay? All right, and these stakeholders need these stakeholders will include the business owners. They will include the um, customers. And at the end of the day, the business owner needs you to launch something very, very quickly so that they can realize a certain uh, business benefit. And the customer, in order for them to stay with you, they need to obviously use the system that they actually prefer to use. So as a result of that, we've got to focus on what is the most important thing we need to do here. And this is where that product owner will prioritize based on business value, the most important things we need to do. Why? Because we're not going to build everything in one go. Now, the different approaches you have the waterfall approach when it comes to managing projects and you have uh, the um, or when it comes to implementing um, the going through the software development life cycle which is analyze design develop test deploy um, you have um, uh, you have you have a number of methodologies. A methodology is a method of doing something. So you have a number of methodologies for the software development life cycle. The first methodology, well, not the first, a number of methodologies out there. There is the agile methodology. There is the um, um, 
bottle form methodology, there is the uh, extreme programming methodology, there is the spiral life cycle methodology, there is the V model methodology, there are like tons of methodologies that have been created over the years. But the one that everyone is really focused on right now is very much the agile methodology because of the, at, at the rate at which we can roll out um, uh, deliverables uh, and deliver products that customers want to use at lightning speed. It's just that simple. So as a result, if I can just take this off if you don't mind, uh, we don't want to use the waterfall approach. Now, why, why don't we want to use the waterfall approach? Well, just think about waterfall. If you ever think about waterfall, it's very much like this, okay? So, it's a step-down approach. The water is falling like, you ever talked about waterfall, all right? So, it's a step-down approach. So, very much, let us analyze all of the requirements. So, imagine all of your user stories here. Imagine all your product backlogs here. Imagine these are all your product backlogs. So, we take everything, we analyze it. That takes us six months, right? We design it. That takes us three months. We develop it, that takes us maybe another six months. All right, let's even say this one is three months. All right, we test it, that takes us maybe one month, and then we deploy it, okay? Uh, deployment can maybe take two weeks, okay? So you, if you think about it, it's taking us three, six, 12, one, one, one year, it's taking us one year, one, um, one month, I think that was one, I think that was two weeks. Okay, that's one year, let me just say one year, one month, plus two weeks for us to deploy this entire system. That's the waterfall approach. Why? Because it's a step-down approach. You must analyze everything, get it signed up with the client before you move on to the next stage. Then once you sign up, then you let design the whole thing, get it signed up with the client, move on to the next stage, then you develop, get it signed up with the client. You can't really make changes. The only time you can make changes is during the stage of analysis, but it must be within the defined scope of work that has been signed off. Very much contractual based. Then you then have your design, which obviously you can't make any changes beyond what has been agreed from based on uh, wireframes. And the problem with this methodology, this waterfall methodology, if I can just put that here, is that is this. There's very little room for flexibility. There's very little room for um, changes. And in a world where technology is constantly changing, the needs of the customers are constantly changing, and the fact that it's going to take you a year and a bit to launch this, by the time you launch it, it may not be relevant. The customer may not need it. And more importantly, you might actually deliver a product that customers don't want to use. So where is this waterfall methodology relevant? Well, it is relevant when the models already exist. You already know what you want to build. The models already exist. The client is just saying, say for example, a checkout, a, an e-commerce platform and you're using Magento platform. The client will say, I want the Magento login, I want the Magento checkout, I want the Magento basket, I want this, I want that. Those models already exist. So you can analyze the requirements, sign it off, hand it over to designers, develop, test, deploy, without very little changes. They're still relevant in today's age, but for models that already are in existence. But when you're building something that you really don't know how it will come out in the end, you really need to roll out things at lightning speed. Uh, well, not entirely lightning speed, but basically you need to be able to grow with a customer by getting their feedback and improving as you go along. This methodology is terrible. It will not work at all. You really need the agile methodology. Okay, the agile methodology, and we'll particularly look at the agile scroll methodology, which is very much a, um, uh, when you think about it, it's very much um, an iterative development process. Iterative means repetitive, okay, and incremental. So you go through a repetitive development process and you deliver on an incremental basis. So you're doing it in bits and bobs and delivering on an incremental basis. I hope it makes sense, okay? So if you think about it from this perspective, we have all of our, so let me just kind of bring that over here, and we have all of our lovely user stories in here. They're prioritized based on business value. So user story, 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 user story. All of these are prioritized based on business value. We're deciding that, okay, now in the next four weeks, four to six weeks, what exactly can we deliver to the customer? That is important, right? Okay, good. So you just imagine that you have your stakeholders over here, you know, and then you have this lovely product owner over here, and he has said that, you know what, um, it's, after speaking to the stakeholders, he realizes that the most important things that need to be delivered within the next four to eight weeks, based on after he has prioritized his backlog, is this set of user stories. Well, that is really good, isn't it? So let us go through the process for this set of user stories, let us go, so just to set a loan, and this set is what we call a sprint, okay? So for this sprint, let us go through the process of analyzing, designing, developing, testing, deploying, so, or, 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 and then we deliver 
a working minimum viable product okay we deliver a minimum viable product that the customer can actually start using straight away which is really good so that way as the customer is using it we are getting feedback from that customer and we can come back over here and we prioritize the backlog maybe they have certain features that are not working properly maybe certain features didn't actually we thought it was great but now it's no longer great you know and we can reprise the backlog and then when we reprioritize backlog we now do a sprint review okay and then we now move on to sprint two okay because we've delivered this one so for sprint two we're going through that same process again analyze design develop test deploy we ship the product out so now we're now going from we now have the original the first minimal viable product we now have the next minimal viable product once again we are giving feedback well, we get feedback from the customer we reprioritize and we repeat that process all the way again okay analyze design develop test deploy and we ship it out there so we now have three um deliverables okay your three deliverables and we keep doing that over and over again until there is no more value in, in to continue or until we have depleted all of the requirements and that's basically the beauty about this there is room for feedback we are building in bits and bobs giving room for changes giving room for agility and flexibility focusing on delivering a working software that is easy to update throughout the life cycle of a project until we deliver a product that actually works and that is very much the beauty about the agile development process bits and bobs incremental okay so we started with one we'll end up with two end up with three until we finish the whole thing which when you think about it is pretty straightforward it kind of makes sense doesn't it and that's what the agile environment is all about you know that's how the agile development process is all about remember waterfall approach you're taking the whole thing analyzing the whole thing designing it developing it testing it can take forever very little room for changes the agile development is doing things in bits and bobs and delivering on an incremental basis and i hope that makes sense so if we look at the ework experience platform we have a launch date for march why? Because we feel that the most important, the more, most viable products is when, what we'll be able to launch by then. Now, um, let's break it down into phases. Our first phase is very much using the data that we have received uh, to improve the user experience. And then we deliver a product that customers actually want to use. The next phase for us is to make, is to now use, is to now take advantage of machine learning, deep learning, to now create an intelligent platform whereby you actually have a virtual uh, um, uh, coach or a virtual instructor guiding you through how you use the platform. Then the next, last phase for us is to mobilize it, whereby you can walk around and actually have your mobile platform, your e-work experience platform in your pocket. Three phases for us based on immediate, mid-term and long-term business value. Uh, which is absolutely critical to us. Um, now, mobilization is very much one of the first things that you do. So it's going to be a mobile site. It's going to be, um, it's going to be built for mobile. But in terms of um, taking advantage of the mobile features, native mobile features, uh, that will be later on where you actually end up with an app. Okay? But one of the beautiful things here is the fact that I don't need to wait till two years time. I don't need to wait till the end of the year for me to build the entire system. I can roll out the most important thing to that customer based on prioritizing the user stories in line with immediate business value to deliver the minimum viable product and then go through that repetitive development process and deliver on an incremental basis. And then the customer ends up using a software that he actually wants to use, which is really, really cool. And that's basically how it works. It's very, very straightforward. So what are we now going to do? This comes to the end of the whole requirement engineering early stage process that we've been talking about. And come tomorrow, we're gonna to now use the tools. On Wednesday, existing candidates will log into the platform, eWork Experience platform, and they will attend the webinar, and they will now see us using Jira and Confluence. The Confluence for the requirement engineering process where we'll create all the use case diagrams, we'll create all the use case documentation. From there, we can flesh out the user stories. From there, we can um, um, now talk about the how. So the user stories is the who, what, why, and the, the how will be the functionalities uh, and the logic and the um, involved in it. And then from there, we can now create the wireframes. In fact, we might even create the wireframes at the same time as we're creating the user stories. Wireframes are sketches of how the system will look from a feature point of view, giving that visual um, aid in respect to that. And then once we're able to do that, uh, we can now sit down with the developers, break things down, 
uh, into little bits and bobs and start building it, you know, and delivering it on an incremental basis. So everyone would experience that. And I think once everyone can see how we're using Jira for Agile Project Management, Conference for Requirement Engineering, they're practicing it and trying out themselves, they're building the experience, um, then they can obviously go out there, apply for work, demonstrate their knowledge and application of what it is that they know, and eventually get that job as we uh, have always done uh, over the last few years. So um, I hope this video really, really helps you, and I can't wait until you have an opportunity to try it out yourself tomorrow. So in the meantime, guys, take care, God bless, and bye-bye.